me low, lay me low, lay me low, where no one can see me, and where no one can find me, where no one can hurt me. Okay, man, start it up. In my area, many parking locations are near major roads and might not be safe. I don't want to return from camping to find my car stripped or worse yet, gone. Some campers have told me that they put a note on their windshield um, if they're not sure about the location saying that their car's broken down. Anyway, right now I am at a good parking lot and it's about time for me to get out. It's, it's relatively secure. Uh, as you can see, a number of people are using the campground this weekend. Review maps, rules, and regulations before you get started. Before I start a hike, I tell a friend uh, where I'll be going and how long I'll be gone. Hi, Bob. I'm hiking the Lone Star Trail near Stubblefield, trailhead number six, and I'll be okay. gone. I'll be gone overnight. I just want to let you know in case something happens. I'll call you All when right. I, uh, I'll call you when I get back uh, sometime tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll be safe. I'll be careful. Okay. Be careful. Watch out for the snakes. I will. Okay. Chat at you later. Alright, thanks. Bye. You look familiar. Are you one of the YouTube guys? Yeah, I'm Ken. I think I've seen some of your videos. Oh, cool. I'm Mike Williams. Good, good to meet you, Mike. So what are you up to today? Well, I'm filming a video on how to do dispersed camping correctly. Oh, I see. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Well, cool. Throw the prith to me, that's cool. When entering an area where you want to be stealth, it's important to not draw attention. 
For example, if I'm in a day use area, I don't carry a large backpack with a sleeping pad unless I want to arouse suspicion. Likewise, I don't walk the trails wearing camouflage clothing. And in particular, I don't wear a camouflage leaf suit like this one here in a city park. I did that once. I was taking pictures in the bushes at these birds out here. But the folks who walked by thought something else was happening and I got all sorts of questions and weird looks. Now I save my camouflage leaf suit for off trail. Bob 808 Knight tells me that if he's in an area where people are fishing, he puts fishing gear in his car and wears gear similar to what everybody else is wearing when they're fishing. And so he blends in. Blending in, however, is just a general rule. Some people are successful at doing just the opposite. Being so totally outrageous, so different, so obnoxious, that they are ignored. This is called somebody else's problem. Yes, the psychologists have found that somebody else's problem, or SAP, actually works. What happens is our brain simplifies the situation and doesn't want to deal with it. It doesn't let us see it. It edits out that situation just like a blind spot. Uh, look at the references down below on SAP. Um, it's something worth knowing about, although it may be a little risky to try. The terms insertion and extraction are used by the military for rapidly putting teams into place in hostile areas and then getting them out again undetected. See the references down below. Several recommendations apply to stealth camping. For example, when hiking along a trail, don't suddenly disappear off trail into the forest when people are watching. You'll know that something strange is happening. In general, the safest time to not be detected for setting up a stealth campsite is at twilight. That's when the light levels are high enough to set up camp, but low enough to make detection difficult. If you know the area and have sufficiently practiced, nighttime setup is even better, assuming you can do this without additional light. If you do use light, it shouldn't be white, but rather red or green. Now I prefer red light because it doesn't interfere with my nighttime vision. Sometimes I scout out an area during the day and then come back at night or at dusk to set up camp. Military Special Ops Forces have extensive tactical experience that requires being invisible to the enemy. This knowledge can be useful when stealth camping. Key factors to consider are the eight S's and the three C's. Military organizations worldwide use variations of these alliterations. First, the eight S's. Shape. Shape should not look like they're human. Second, shine. Shine on objects are a dead giveaway that something unusual is present. Silhouette. Silhouette should look like the surrounding area. Saturation. Colors should be drab and earth-toned. Shadow. Shadows are also a dead giveaway. Many prey animals, for example, are particularly sensitive to shadows from predators. Still. Be still. If there is movement, it should follow what the vegetation is doing, perhaps moving back 
and forth slowly. Silent. Sound travels a long way. Be quiet. No talking. No batoning. If you do make sounds, it should mimic the wildlife or the vegetation. Spacing. If several people are being stealth, they should separate themselves in the same way that, that wildlife do or that the vegetation is separated. Now let's consider the three C's. First, cover. Natural vegetation is the best cover. Second, camouflage. Use camouflage coloration or patterns that break up the shape outline so that it's less visible. And third, concealment. Keep from being found by being concealed. Cover your tracks, erase your footprints. Don't break vegetation when you walk. Use a small shelter that is close to the ground that can be put up and taken down quickly. Some examples are hammocks, poncho shelters, bivy shelters, or small tents. Hammocks should be hung low to the ground and, if at all possible, touching the ground. A tarp over the hammock, covered with dead branches, provides excellent cover. If you want to go more minimal, you can sleep in a poncho hoot shelter directly on the ground. This is a poncho that's just on the ground and you sleep under it. It probably provides the greatest camouflage because of its low silhouette. Bivy shelters are also good. Their setup is almost instantaneous. You can uh, purchase commercial bivy shelters or you can make your own out of plastic bags. The fourth option is to use a tent. Their setup is more time consuming, but many people prefer them. The approach that you use depends upon personal preferences and the extent to which you want to be stealth. Or beans, maybe. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. The smell of food and smoke from a fire are dead giveaways of your presence. Food is best eaten in a different location from your campsite. Bringing food that may be eaten cold is something that you may want to also consider. If you do make a fire, it should be small. Historically, many cultures use small pit fires. The Dakota pit fire is a particularly good one because it provides a concentrated heat source and reduces the fire signature because the fire is below ground. There is a second hole that provides the draft so that there's very little smoke. Small stoves work very well because they don't heat the ground, reducing heat signature. Uh, the most stealthy stoves burn denatured alcohol. And this burns clean with essentially no flame and no smoke. The guideline for low impact backpacking is to leave nothing but your footprints. However, if you're concerned about people following you, be careful to brush out your tracks. If you do leave footprints, keep them where they will do the least environmental damage. If you are on an established trail, walk in the center of it. If you come to a muddy section of the trail, then walk through the mud rather than around it. When walking in an area without established trails, the approach is almost the opposite. Rather than trying to concentrate your impact where others have walked, the idea is to disperse it as much as possible. Walk on the most durable ground that you can find. Rock instead of dirt. Dead leaves instead of live plants. 
and so forth. Be mindful of the wildlife that you may encounter along the way. It sometimes helps to treat off-trail hiking like a game. Pretend that people are following you and you want to lose them. Just because you are camouflaged to the human eye, you are not necessarily invisible. Like other animals, people give off a heat signature that may be detected by night vision cameras. This Bushnell Trophy Cam, for example, uses a passive infrared motion sensor and takes black and white pictures at night using an infrared LED flash. The motion sensor is so sensitive that it is triggered by the movements of animals as small as mice. The big question is, what does this game camera see in comparison to my standard video camera? I decided to run both cameras at the same time during both twilight and at night, and I compared what they captured with my drab green clothing, my camouflage shirt, camouflage a scarf, black plastic bag, and then another black plastic bag that has been painted with a camouflage paint. And then finally, my leaf suit. The results were surprising. Wow, was I surprised. The results blew me away. At night, my green t-shirt, my camouflage shirt, and my camo scarf were highly visible to the game camera. My scarf, as an example, is well camouflaged during the day and also at twilight, but it became bright white at night with the game camera the best camouflage during the day, at twilight, and at night, with this infrared game camera, was a black plastic garbage bag that has been spray painted with camouflage colors. The number one secret of successful stealth camping is to talk with other stealth campers. Their experience may give you ideas and tips that you may want to try. My friend Bob 808 Knight has stealth camped most of his life, and so far he's not been caught. If you get caught camping or trespassing on their property, they will take you to jail, they will prosecute, and they will fine you. Bob knows what works, what doesn't work, and the consequences of being caught. He speaks from experience in the United States, and so his conclusions may or may not be relevant in different parts of the world. Let's hear what he has to say. 
I'm going to answer some questions about stealth camping. First one is trespassing. If you're on public land or private land without a trespassing sign, generally they will ask you to leave. If you're on public land or private land with a trespassing sign, there's a 50-50 chance the law enforcement officer or the property owner will prosecute you. Now, railroad land, if you get caught trespassing there, they're going to take you to jail, prosecute you, and fine you. So steer clear of railroad property at all costs. What happens if you get caught? Generally, you're going to be searched and harassed a little bit. But be very truthful with the law enforcement officer. Tell them what you're doing, and they might go a little bit easier on you. Make sure you don't have any firearms, recreational drugs, and all your knives are at the legal length. How to pick out a location. Well, Google Earth is my best friend. I can search out an area, and then I'll go out and scout it out, and that's a location I'll use. But, if you decide to do it on the fly, a regular standalone car GPS works great. You can find out where you are and what are your exit points. What's an exit point? Well, if you're set up and somebody's coming your way and searching for you, you will see them long before they will see you if you're well camouflaged. That way you have a way to exit. When's a good time to set up camp? Usually I like to do it at dusk or when it's nighttime. I like to leave before the sun comes up, that way I don't get caught. If you do it at dark like I do, your best bet is to use a red or a green light. Just steer clear of white because obviously somebody can see you. But the best light to be used would be a green because it blends in with the surroundings. It's another good thing to know your pack, especially when you're sitting up in the dark. I like to put everything in the same place on my pack as I do for just regular camping. That way, in the nighttime, I can reach in there and find what I need. What about cooking? Pack stoves work great, but in some instances, if you're far enough out, you can use open flame. I suggest using a trench fire. Why? Because they're easy to put out. All you got to do is throw the dirt over the top of it. Fires out, no smoke, no mess. If you use the above a ground, above ground fire, throw water on it, you just set up a smoke signal and they pretty much can see you. Clothing. What to wear. Generally, I don't go full camel. Dark colors work perfectly. If you're walking around with full camo on, on a trail, people are going to ask you questions. It comes to another thing. If you do in a public park, like I do sometimes, and you've got a packed load of gear on there, somebody asks what you're doing, tell them you're training for a hike, and they'll understand and pretty much leave you alone. Now, for the most important thing of all, leave no trace. If you leave an a camp area messy and somebody discovers it, they're going to start patrolling that area looking for other people camping, and you're just going to ruin it for the next guy. Because the laws and protocols for stealth camping vary by country and location, some of Bob's suggestions may or may not be useful to you. It's up to you to decide what you want to do and how far you want to carry the idea of being stealth. Stealth camping does not necessarily mean illegal camping. Until next time, peace. Where?